everybody. I am João Federici, the World Cinema Programmer and the Vivali Cine Manager, and thank you for sticking around for this virtual conversation with the director of La Civile, Teodora Ana Mihai. We are electrified to bring the US premiere of this important, urgent, timely film. So, without further ado, it's my pleasure to bring out the director of La Civil, Teodora Ana Mihai. Hi, Teodora. Hi, hello. Thank you very much for uh, inviting the film and for um, this talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's for us, first of all, it's congratulations on your film and thank you for accepting our invitation for this conversation. Just to start, how did you come up with the idea to tell this story? Yes, um, well, a lot of people are a bit uh, puzzled uh, by, by the fact that the Romanian-born uh, director who lives in Belgium uh, makes this, this story, of, uh, directs this story and co-writes it. And it's actually, um, you know, my, my story with Mexico goes back quite, quite some years ago when I was studying in San Francisco, California. I was a uh, high school uh, student there. I finished uh, my two, two last years of high school and a lot of my friends and acquaintances were of uh, Latin origin, many of them Mexican. And so, so I got acquainted with Mexico as a country and a culture back then. And it, you know, as a, as a country, it was quite a different uh, um, situation. I mean, people were able to freely visit the country without, um, you know, really risking uh, or fearing for their security. And from the moment that uh, President Calderon um, declared the war on drugs, uh, slowly but surely, people's daily lives, citizens' daily lives you know, got affected and, and, and start, it started being uh, unsafe, shootouts on the street, um, you know, bodies hanging from bridges, uh, really, really uh, very visible cartel violence, kidnappings and so on and so forth. So I, I kind of, you know, my link with Mexico State in Belgium uh, some 10 years ago, I... Um, I met uh, Abacuc Antonio de Rosario, who's the co-writer of, uh, of La Civil, uh, who's a Mexican novelist um, at the base, and uh, you know who accepted this challenge uh, to to write a story with me. And um, his uh, literature is actually talking a lot about this insecurity and about how violence sips into the daily lives uh, of, of people in the north of Mexico. So uh, his, his writing has been a, a, a source of, uh, well, inspiration and a lot of debates, a lot of discussions around this yeah. subject matter. So, so know, we I decided know. to... Yeah, he wrote uh, Sin Tricheras, no? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, and, and uh, it's all about the, the, the narco and the, 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 this violence in the North Mexico. Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, as you, bring, you brought that, that up, um, how also, how was to work in this partnership, you know, with him, how it started? Because uh, uh, my question in the first question, how was you come up with the idea? Because I know that I, First, you were looking to a doc to make a documentary. Yes. Now, could you I tell was... us more about this and uh, when you met? Yeah, I, well, I, I, I told him that I wanted, I was very interested in making a documentary about, about this subject matter. Uh, I, I, I thought it was very important. I tried to understand how is it to be a parent? How is it to be a, a, a child in this kind of circumstances where you leave the house in the morning and you, you basically don't know if you're going to come back. And, um, you know, he said, yeah, plenty of stories in, in my 
you know, in, in, in my state, um, you know, so I started, uh, we started uh, doing research and uh, we did a lot of research. We, we had many, many interviews. My original uh, idea was to make it from the point of view of children or, or teenagers. And then uh, through a, a common acquaintance, um, I met Miriam Rodriguez, who uh, later on became a, a famous uh, militant who unfortunately passed away, was murdered on the yeah. on, on Mother's, Mexican Day. Mother's Day, uh-huh. yes, in 2017. But so when, when we met her in 2014 or 15, um, you know, she she shared uh, her story with us, but one of the first things that she told us and that completely, you know, won me over uh, in wanting to tell this the story from a mother's point of view and not from a child's point of view was that she said, um, when I wake up in the morning, I want to kill or die. Mm-hmm. That's how I wake up every morning. And, and you know, this was, this is a... a this was a mother, you know, a, a mm-hmm. Pacific uh, kind of profile Woman, of a person. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I thought to myself, what does she, what did she uh, experience to come to such a conclusion? And and so we went on uh, conversing and, and, you know, like continuing the dialogue for a long time. Uh, and and then uh, I started filming her. We filmed her for about two weeks, following her in uh, in her daily life. But it uh, it became quite uh, clear very very early on that it wasn't the best way to bring this story. Uh, security wise, um, self censorship wise, for security's sake, uh, censorship wise, because you know authorities are not jumping. Uh, uh, for us to to come with the cameras and uh, you know we I just had the feeling that what I had seen or heard was not exactly what what we were able to capture because you know people you know <laughs> yeah. so this was not the way to go and then uh, and we didn't want to to put too much the spotlight on on, on Miriam for her safety and her family's safety and 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 everyone involved really. Uh-huh. So then uh, we decided, okay, we're going to uh, approach it differently. Okay. To switch to transform to fiction. Okay. Uh, inspiring on ourselves on on Miriam Rodriguez as a, the, I mean, she was the inspiration for Cielo. For sure. Um, but uh, also, you know, this is this story is inspired uh, by her story and by the many testimonies that we collected. It's not what she experienced. It, I mean, it's not a biopic. This is a fiction yeah. uh, that is very rooted in in reality, and it's important to note that. But uh, it's uh, there was a lot of work in in writing it and in in making it circular and in having you know making it layered, having these thematic that come back so so it i mean it was a, a piece of fiction writing but of course uh, everything that we we put uh, in it w- was quite plausible in reality from I our experience see that. yeah i think you we all here in this room we saw that and uh uh how was it you you said about you you're talking about security uh to film it uh, to following uh, Miriam Rodriguez, that uh, she was an amazing, she became amazing human uh, rights activist after her her daughter was kidnapped and killed. And uh, what what was what were the locations for the film when the, when you guys decided to 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 become a fiction and they starting working on that. So what, uh, where we filmed the fiction or where yes, we were? Yes, yes. Now, where you filmed the fiction? What is it the was, film it is located? Yeah, it's, it's located in the state of Durango, um, which is quite in the north of Mexico still, but luckily uh, a region that is uh, um, at, the, at the moment and, and since uh, quite some time, um, you know, controlled uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and safe. Uh, for film projects, there is quite quite a lot of film and, and television projects 
being yeah. filmed there. It's also the state of John Wayne. He um, yeah yeah he, he bought uh, a, a beautiful uh, ranch uh, that is called La Joya, that is still used as a well you know parts museum, but also uh, it's still used as a film set. Uh, Mm -hmm. And how was the process to, to cast your actors? Because you have an amazing ensemble. And uh, uh, I needed to say that uh, I love Ercelia Hamidis as the mother at Cielo. She put all her brain and blood, everything is there all the time. And uh, she's an extraordinary actress. And how did you cast? Uh, and uh, was easy to find your Cielo? Well, eh, luckily, I must tell you that um, I, I had her on my radar since I was a teenager, since I was Laura's age uh, and <laughs> I was studying in California. And I saw this beautiful film, um, Como Agua para Chocolate, like water for chocolate. And, you know, Arcelia actually had this small role, but she was the narrator of the story. And, you know, she's there at the beginning and at the end. And, and, but I loved, I loved her presence and I, it really stayed with me, her face, like, um, and then so many years later, uh, I don't even know how many, I think like 20 <laughs> years later, or maybe even more, um, you know, I was looking for my cielo and, from three different directions, people um, gave me her name. So, so I, I went, looked her up, and I was like, of course, I know. I, 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 you know, it made a click. And I was like, yeah, I, I really could see her as Cielo and, and let me uh, reach out to her, uh, send her the script and see her reaction. And uh, her reaction was beautiful. So I, I really, you know, we started uh, speaking about the project, about uh, the role, and um, and basically, yeah, I I didn't have to look a lot further because there was my cello. <laughs> you know that I, she was the your yeah, cello. you know, she was so committed to. Uh, she loved the script. Um, and she really wanted to give life to this to this uh, this character, and um, you know she was really she you know she thought the subject matter was so important for her country. Yeah, yeah um, I think it is. That's I think that talks uh, inside of all of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, mainly for uh, Mexicans that uh, live that daily. No. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And the, how was that? The the I know that uh, you 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 mostly found it through European found the your film. Uh, yes. Did you have difficulty to getting Mexican support to tell the story? Uh, yes, <laughs> we we got local support uh, uh -huh. from the state of Durango. Uh, we didn't have uh, state support. Um, yeah, I mean, the COVID crisis came along, I don't know exactly, you know, like I there's know. a lot of projects also in competition and, um, you know, so it didn't, it didn't happen for La Civil. Uh, we, we, we tried one fund and it, uh, we didn't get, but, uh, you know, luckily Durango did give us uh, support and, and we had in the end, uh, despite COVID, uh, which, you know, increased our budget, uh, kind, it kind yeah. of exploded, but in the end we were managed, I mean, we you, were able to manage it. Yeah, you were, you were shooting in the middle of when the, 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 the yes. COVID wave had come? Yes, wow. we were, we were shooting in the middle of, uh, well, in some parts of the world lockdown. Uh, it was in November and December of last year. Wow. So there are no vaccines, no, and we we were so afraid uh, because Arcelia was literally in every scene. Yeah. So if you know if she would test positive or or anyone from the key crew would test positive, we would you know be ruined uh, production wise. But uh, luckily uh, we had a good star because like things went smoothly. 
Um, yeah, great. And 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 the, and the Belgian the, the Belgian government actually gave this emergency COVID fund, which allowed us to uh, to finish the project. And how long did it take to to shoot there in Durango? Uh, we shot about six weeks. Okay. okay. Yeah. Which and was uh, not a lot for how long the film is. And yeah, I know. And it is interesting that uh, because you were Romanian born and uh, you live in Belgium and uh, you study here, you study in New York. And uh, have you felt some difficulty to, you know, as a woman to shoot a, a Mexican story? You know, and uh, uh, how was that for you? How was that? Uh, how was the acceptance for you to work there? Yeah, well, I I must say that uh, there were kings in the K wall. I mean, it it, uh, but but I guess it is for every film and for every filmmaker, regardless of the genre. Um, uh, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't easy, but I didn't feel, I feel, I felt quite accepted. What helped is that I'm really fluent in, in uh, Spanish, in Mexican Spanish, actually, with the <laughs> accent. That's, that's where I learned my Spanish. That's great. So, um, and I, I have a lot of empathy, which, you know, I, I, I kind of, uh, you know, needed for a documentary when I started my career. And it, it is something that I possess, that I, I, I like to be with people and to make them excited about what I'm doing. And so, you know, I, I, I feel that uh, people came on board and uh, were a lot, there, there was a lot of motivation. And you know what, what I thought was so touching and so... Um, I mean, amazing to discover that a lot of my crew and, and actors had been personally affected in some way, some, sometimes very direct way, sometimes a little bit, um, but by the subject matter. I can't imagine. Family members, yeah, family members disappearing, you know, like uh, oh my God. deaths in the family and so on and so forth. So people were really wanted to make this project because they had a very personal link to it as well mm -hmm. so they they came on the boat and and really uh kind of tried to help me make it make it yeah i know that and uh, i mm -hmm. uh, you talked about your documenter uh, your document uh, document and uh, i love waiting uh, yes. for <laughs> august you know Thank and uh, you. congratulations for our audience here it's a film. It's a doc from 2014, 15, 14, uh, yeah, 14, and uh, won a good prize in Scarlet, no, and uh, also it, I think that a uh, hot it dogs won in, in hot Toronto, dogs, yeah, yeah, hot dogs, Carlo Vivari, and and, and many, yeah, it, it was a, a loved film. Uh, it it won more than ten international awards, I think, uh, and it opened a lot of doors. I mean, it was such a local small story. That's an amazing story. story. That's an amazing yes. story, you know, and you, I never know, I, you know, I heard that from your film. Thank you. You know, that is yeah. how families need to leave the country, parents to go to another country. In the case, of, I think it was Italy, you know, because I saw a long time. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's yeah, but I mean, it's everywhere. I, I live in Belgium. You, we have the same phenomenon. But uh, what what makes it uh, easier for Romanians to go to to Italy or Spain is the language, because yes, you know, I mean, yes. Romanian is a Latin based language. So, so yeah, people prefer yeah. those countries because they have it a bit easier to learn the language. But yeah, uh, yeah. Teodora, I would love to talk with you for much longer, but. Unfortunately, we run out of the time. And I'd I like to, uh, last you ask it for you, uh, last you, uh, question is, uh, do you have some new project that you can share with us? Uh, I do, I don't have a name yet. And, uh, but what I can tell you about it is that this time it is going to be back in Europe and back, uh, it's going to make a link between uh, Romania and Belgium. So it's, oh, it's on both. Uh, Romania, Belgium, and Holland. Fiction uh, doc. 
It's fiction. Yes, oh, I'm saying I'm I'm You'll speaking like with fiction at the moment. <laughs> I I actually uh, at this moment in my in my life and in my career, I I'm quite excited about fiction. No. Um, I'm not saying that I will not return to documentary at some point that I will not revisit it, but uh, for now I'm 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 good with the fiction. <laughs> oh. Congratulations on the important film, you know. And once and again, thank you so much, Teodora, for making this time to chat with thank us you. today. And thank, uh, you. thank you so much. And thank you all for watching La Civil with us. And for more information about our 2021 Mill Valley Film Festival, access mvff.com. Ciao.